Howdy folks, this is Anson Garcia with Tier 2 UC Engineering. What I'll be going over today is the Verizon Wireless Mobile UC client in the undocked mode. In the undocked mode. So um, what I want to show you is um, what features we're using in Cisco Unified Communication Manager. I mean, what are the things that are enabling this thing to work? Um, also, uh, want to go over what the actual mobile client looks like and acts like. I want to give you a slide where presentation of a demo and then we're going to go right into a live demo. Hopefully at the end of this you'll be able to fully understand the Verizon Wireless Mobile UC client, what's going on in the background, um, and what are the things that you need to plan for uh, if you're selling your customer the Verizon Wireless Mobile UC client and SIP trunking. So there's some important things to understand in the background so you can size your IP trunking uh, correctly. So uh, let's continue here. Um, okay, so let me first explain what things are going on in the background. So we got to get our arms around um, uh, certain items that are in being invoked in the Cisco Unified Communication Manager. So let's go over uh, what these features are and what the Verizon Mobile UC client is using in the background. First, let's go over single number reach. So single number reach is the ability to um, present a call that that is um, somebody that calls your IP desk phone to present that call on your mobile phone. So I call that incoming. So let's just draw a little phone here. This is the IP desk phone. Sorry for my terrible drawing here. And I got a mobile phone over here. And let's say we have, I don't know, let's say we have a little cloud, which represents UCAS and SIP trunking. And I'll do that. Terrible with mouse. And I'm going to just put SIP here for SIP trunking. Okay, single number each. Uh, something comes in from the PSDN out here. Uh, comes into the cloud, UCAS, whatever, and then gets presented to your desk phone, and single number reach will also present that to your mobile phone, right? Okay, so that's what we call single number reach. What are the features within single number reach that uh, you can do? Well, you can pick up your phone at your desk or remote, right? So if both of them are ringing, you can pick up either one and you get connected with that PSDN user out here. You can also invoke features, mid-call transfer, mid-call conference, call hold, call park, uh, things like that via DTMF tones that you can um, depress on your mobile phone. Now, most people, pretty much all people, don't know what those DTMF tones are. Uh, they're like uh, star 81, star 82, star 83, star 84. Anyway, so those features are usually never invoked. People just want single number reach. They want their cell phone to ring, to ring things like that. It's a great for uh, people that just want to give one number out or they have several maybe cell phones and they want to uh, make multiple uh, remote destinations or program multiple remote destinations inside their UCAS, UCAS service or their Cisco Unified Communication um, uh, Manager. And these things can be programmed in the user portal inside Communication Manager. Um, also will be able to be programmed in the BOSS uh, portal when that's released also. Okay, so uh, I just explained mobile mobility services as far as single number reach. I like to call that, uh, oops, let me, let me do this here. I like to call these things right here the incoming services, all right? Incoming because they're incoming from the PSDN. Okay, if we talk about true fixed mobile convergence, we have to have incoming and outgoing. So what do I mean by outgoing? I mean where I'm on my mobile phone over here and I dial a PSDN user out here, I want that my IP desk phone the, 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 the 
same phone number that people would call me from the PSDN to my desk phone, and then all that would all, um, also be presented on my mobile phone. I want that number to be presented as call ID when I call from my mobile phone. In other words, if I call a PSDN user out here, the call ID that's on this guy right here, my IP desk phone, that's what I wanted presented out here. Okay, so they don't get my mobile phone number, they'll get my IP desk phone number. That's nice because anytime I call anybody, um, they're going to have in their call history or whatever my IP desk phone number, and that IP desk phone number is enabled with single number reach. So if they call that IP desk phone number, they only have one number, and it's going to ring all my other devices, or in this case, just my cell phone also, or both phones. So I can pick up either one. Okay, that's the outgoing stuff. What enables that is what we call mobile voice access and enterprise feature access, MVA and EFA for short. So let me first explain mobile voice access. Mobile voice access allows a mobile user to, or any PSDN phone rather, uh, for that matter, to dial into UCAS slash Cisco Unified Communication Manager, and that DID number that is associated, so there's a DID associated with the MBA feature. We, we assign a DID to this MBA feature. And let's say this is call manager right here, DCM. When they dial um, that MBA number, it terminates inside, not really, but for the sake of argument here, or simplicity, it terminates inside communication manager. In IVR, gets invoked. Uh, the IVR uses the, F, uh, the XML from an ISR router, um, but needless to say, an IVR gets invoked. That IVR says something in the effect of, hi, you reached mobile voice access, um, put in your PIN number. And whatever the user's PIN number that is programmed in call manager, um, the user puts in that PIN number, one, two, three, four, pound, and then after authenticating that PIN number, the Cisco Unified Communication Manager will then present a list of options. One being dial one pound to dial a number. In other words, you dialed one number, which would get you inside Call Manager. You authenticate with your PIN number, and then you dial one pound to dial another number. So this is why it's called two-stage dialing, because you dial twice once to get in, and um, uh, once again to either ring an internal phone or ring an external PSDN number, right? We're talking about PSDN numbers, so I'll, I'll use that example. Again, we dial in, um, pin, invoke our calling feature one pound, and then we dial out. Nine, access code, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two three four, five, or one, two, three, four, excuse me. And what happens then is call manager then would hairpin, so we go back out. We actually came in a SIP trunk here, and then we go out to the PSDN, and then we present the call ID of our IP desk phone number, not of this uh, cell phone number. That's kind of how that works. All right? Why in the world would we do this? Again, because we're always wanting to present a single number to anybody we call, either internally or externally. still works the same. Now, why would we do this? Because uh, this dual stage di or, or um, two stage dialing, it's cumbersome. You dial one number, then you dial pin, then you have to dial the number that you want to that you really want to call. So it is cumbersome. People usually invoke this feature. Not many folks do, but people usually invoke this feature if they have low cost SIP trunks and they're doing a lot of international calling. So that's one one one. Uh, um, I play economics would drive uh, you to be a little bit more cumbersome and use this feature. Okay, now the enterprise feature access, the EFA, is the same exact thing as mobile voice access, except without the IBR. So no, no IBR. So you can call in the call manager, and nothing's presented, no IBR, and you can dial one, two, three, four pound, and then one pound, and then your number 
let's say access nine, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And then that call would then go out, again, being presented with the call ID of your IP desk phone, not your mobile number. All right? This is exactly what the Verizon Wireless Mobile UC client uses. Uh, it doesn't need an IVR, so in the background what it's doing is two-stage dialing. The user doesn't know it, but that's exactly what the over-the-top client is doing. All right? Now, together, those two, we talked about incoming, right? This is, this is incoming. You're saying you don't reach stuff. Incoming. And then outgoing are these, these, these two features. That, together, then, is fixed mobile convergence. All right? So two features. So now that you know what features are being invoked and what we're using inside uh, the Cisco Unified Communication Manager, let's look at how this thing works. I'm not going to go over the dock. I'm going to do that in a, later, um, in a later demo, but that's what it looks like, just so you know. What I'm more interested in right now and what I'm trying to explain is when we're in the undocked mode. So take a look right here. What's happening or what happened is this person called the number and then when he pushes call, he gets presented with a box. That box has two buttons. If he pushes the business button, exactly what we just went over, back over here with EFA, that's what gets invoked. Calls call manager first, then calls out to the PSTN presenting the IP desk phone call ID. Okay? It just does in the background. Two-stage dialing just doing in the background. So that's what that button does. Um, if you choose the mobile button, uh, then your mobile number is just it just works just like your regular cell phone. You would call and it would go over the mobile network and the, the call ID that's uh, displayed on the on the uh, call ed number uh, on the um, uh, call ed cell phone or PSDN phone or whatever would be that of your mobile phone. All right, simple. So let's take a look at a, um, a slideware demo, and then we'll take a look at a real demo. All right? So what's happening here? We have uh, Anson Garcia here has a IP desk phone right here. His work number is this 0981. He's also got a Droid, uh, Verizon Wireless Droid X, and his mobile number is this number here. All right, and I just put the work number here, just so you can, you know, this work number here is the same one as over here. Okay, what's going to happen is Anson's, uh, Anson's going to call um, Jack Sparrow. All right, Jack Sparrow's sitting out here in the PSDN world, and uh, his uh, mobile number here, he's out in the PSDN, and his mobile number is 832-492-7860. All right, uh-oh. Closed on me there. We'll have to re invoke that. Okay, so what, what happens next? The uh, client chooses the button on the Verizon Wireless, or the, excuse me, chooses business button on the Verizon Wireless Mobile UC client. All right, so he dialed. This number, right, Anson dialed this number down here, 832-492-7860. He pushes the business number, so he pushes call, and then he said that two buttons are presented to him. He pushes the business number or business button, and then what happens is two-stage dialing. Here comes the call inside the mobile network um, and into call manager, right, terminates on the EFA. Remember, we're using the EFA feature. EFA feature in there. EFA also has a DID number associated with it, so that's the DID that's called. So this this different number is called before before um, uh, uh, before this number is is called. This EFA number is called. So in the background, this number is called. And then what happens after that? Two stage dialing, right? Now the call gets presented. Now the call goes back out. Hairpins 
on the um, uh, on, on the SBC goes back out tip trunking, right? Because it came in tip trunking, going out tip trunking. This is all signaling at this point, and then gets you know starts ringing the phone out here in the PSDN world. Now the call ID that's presented here is not the mobile number here; it's the work number. Okay, and this work number is presented as a call ID out here. All right. And then uh, the call comes up, RTP, and we're hairpinning here. The RTP, um, you know, we got two concurrent calls nailed up. So it's important to note when you're selling this feature, it's important to understand what's going on in the background. You may have to sell some additional concurrent calls just to make sure uh, you have enough bandwidth and, of course, a, a little bit more gold call, right? You have a lot of them. Um, uh, plan accordingly if you have a small amount, you know, 10 users or, or so, uh, you may get away with, um, you know, just planning one or two more concurrent calls. Okay, so let's look at what this looks like in real life. All right, do a demo here. Discard those. Okay, let's bring up uh, this guy here. And um, looks like we lost our iPhone. Let me bring that back up here real quick. Give me just a second. Make sure we're up here. Okay. Got dropped there. All righty. Okay, so we have two phones here. This phone's out in the PSDN world out here. This is Jack's phone. All right. Here is our Android over here on the left. And he's running the Cisco, excuse me, the Verizon Wireless Mobile UC client. All right, real quick, this client is very easy to install. Uh, the only thing you will see, I'll show it to you here real quick. The only thing you will see um, in your um, app drawer uh, is the Mobile UC client icon. Now, if I click on this icon, what happens is, we're just uh, uh, in configuration mode. So it's not an app like you're um, uh, used to. Um, the app is actually a daemon running underneath the covers. So um, if I go in here, all it's gonna present to me is my configuration uh, for my mobile UC. And um, the best way I found to use this is is add your widget so you guys should be familiar with adding widgets in Android you can uh, press and hold right and you get um, your uh, uh, widget folder here and then you can go into Android widgets and then if you um, scroll down after you've installed the application uh, you will have um, the mobile UC quick call and the mobile UC call type I like the call type better um, the call type is what you see right here, so this widget right here. And you can clearly see that the button that I have, three buttons right here, business, prompt, and mobile. If I choose business, that's always going to use my business button. It's not going to ask me. Um, it's just every call that I make is going to do that two-stage dialing and present my IP desk phone uh, call ID to the end user or the call ed user. Um, um, every time. Uh, and then I can choose mobile. That makes that, That's going to just use my regular mobile phone. I'm not going to do any of this, you know, going in the SIP trunk and going out and using the EFA feature or anything like that. And then I can choose prompt. All right, that's what I have invoked right now. So it's going to prompt me for every call. It's going to prompt me, what do I want to use, my business or my mobile persona? All right, so let's take a look at what this looks like. Let's go into our dialer here 
looks like uh, I'm already uh, ready to call Jack Sparrow. Let's select old Jack Sparrow there. And um, this is Jack Sparrow's mobile number. So I'm going to call his PSDN phone out here in the PSDN world. And um, um, let's call. And there's my buttons. I can hit mobile or business. What I want to show you is business. If I choose business, we're going to do this right here. We're going to come out and present to uh, the iPhone Anson's work number. All right, now I have contacts. I have myself in, in, and Jack in, in my contacts here. So what you'll see is not my actual call ID, but you'll see my contact, you know, Anson's work or Anson's mobile. So uh, just FYI on that. So let's choose business. Okay, and there goes the call. Right now, this dual stage calling is taking place right here. I'll put speakerphone, maybe you can hear that. It's already ringing, so it didn't take but a few more seconds to do this two stage dialing. Here, my call is being presented, and the Anson work number is being presented over here. All right, so my work number was presented as the number, the incoming, or the call ID. Okay, let's do that same test again. I'm going to choose Jack Sparrow again here to call. I'm going to call. I'm going to choose my mobile number. All right, now what's going to happen is we're just going to extend across the mobile network, right, and I'm simulating this as a PSDN phone, but he's on the mobile, you know, on the mobile network too, but uh, basically, he's going to go through the mobile network to the PSDN and then um, uh, to the iPhone over here, and he's going to present uh, my Anson's mobile number right here as the call ID. So it's going to be different. So let's choose that. Let's concentrate on the right over here, and let's see what call ID is displayed now. Okay, we can clearly see it's Anson Garcia's mobile number that is displayed now. All right, so that's how that works. Now, um, oh, let me do one more thing here. Let's do that call one more time on, in the business persona. Waiting for my screen to refresh here. Doesn't look like it is going to. Let me see here. Give me a second. There you went. Okay, I'm going to use my business persona. You can go over to the right here and see Anson's work number is going to be presented. Here comes the number. Here comes the call. I'm going to go ahead and answer that. Okay, now we have the call up. Now, um, your attention over here on the left. Now, I have these features here. This conference feature is not using my mobile conference feature. It's going to use, you know, I can transfer and I can conference. All right, so this transfer and conference are invoked because the call is through my UCAS system or my call manager up here, and those features are being invoked inside the IPPBX. All right, so I can conference and I can, you know, I can dial a four digit number if I have a four digit dialing plan or I can conference somebody else in, but I'm using the conferencing resources that are available to me in my UCAS system or my call manager um, 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 just important to note that. So I have these extra features over here. I can also add a call 
if I want to. Uh, and then I can mute the speakerphone and do all that stuff also. So just wanted to show you that. Um, hopefully this um, enlightens you a bit to what's going on in the background and how the Verizon Wireless Mobile UC client looks, acts, and um, displays um, to, uh, to the end user. And uh, you see a little bit of that end user experience. Uh, thanks for watching.